The voice of the stressed achiever has much to do. She likes to focus on accomplishments, and she cares deeply about the opinions of others. Never allowing a break, the stressed achiever keeps you driving forward, and she will have nothing to do with laziness. But what really hums underneath is a fear that she doesn't exist apart from her accomplishments. These are her mantras. Staying busy proves my worth. The more I produce, the more I am. Someone must push this thing up the hill. Let's get going. Today, I'm talking with Morgan Northway Washnevsky. She has a before and after story of dealing with her inner stressed achiever, and it's truly inspiring. I'm Jem Fadling, and it's time for I Can Do That. Morgan Northway is a coach who helps women create lives beyond their wildest dreams. She works with women in one-to-one and group coaching ways. She also loves speaking and facilitating retreats. She and her husband recently moved to her husband's home country of Austria. You can find Morgan at morgannorthway.com and on Instagram at morgannorthway. Enjoy my conversation with Morgan. Well, welcome everyone. And of course, as I mentioned, I've got my friend Morgan here and I'm so excited because she is going to talk to us about the stressed achiever. And of course, neither one of us can really resonate (laughs) with what that's about at all. Um, (laughs) But I'm so thankful you're here, Morgan. So thanks for sharing with us. Mm, Thank you so much, Jem, for having me. And yeah, I'm excited to speak on this topic. I have so much to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, I know you do. Well, I'm wondering just before we kind of leap into a conversation about the stressed achiever, maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you just made a relatively big move and that'd be fun to hear about. Yeah. So I am Morgan Northway. I'm a life coach and I live bi-continental with my husband, uh, which I'm still getting used to say. We live in Vienna and in LA, and I'm originally from Iowa. Throw that in there in the from the Midwest. And yeah, this was um, kind of to drop you into my present day life. A dream of ours was to live in multiple places. And so we've held on to that vision for the last six, seven years. And um, it never felt like the right time. Of course, it was always like, when is that going to happen? And I was speaking to a dear friend last summer and she said, Morgan, what if right now is the perfect time to go for it? And everything in me came up of why it wouldn't be the right time and all the reasons. And there was this whisper though. It's like, what if what if we did go and create this dream? And now I'm I am speaking to you from Vienna, Austria. <laughs> and it's uh, been a journey to get here. And it's a huge reflection of the work I do with women, which is like, what if anything was possible and, and really living a life beyond your wildest dreams? Yeah, well, let me just say about this much about that. If you want to follow Morgan on Instagram, you can be instantly transported. It's just, you're such a fun follow because everywhere you point your camera is like just (laughs) castles and beautiful landscapes. It's just amazing. So much beauty. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. So fun to watch you. So, well, thanks for that little update. And why don't we dig in to the stressed achiever? And I did, (laughs) I asked Morgan's permission beforehand. We're going to divulge a secret here. Um, Morgan is actually the stressed achiever inside my book, Hold That Thought. And she was gracious enough to not only share her story with you in print, but now she has said yes to sharing her actual life with you as we're sharing here. So I could not be more happy that you are this courageous and willing Mm -hmm. to share your journey so that we can learn. Because why else are we talking about all these voices? You know, the stressed achiever, the inner critic is because they're happening inside of us and we want to grow beyond them to embrace them, but not let them run the show. Mm. And I have journeyed with you for a while now, and you really have learned 
right? Yeah. To, to see, notice this voice and mm-hmm. to make some new choices. So that's what I'm hoping we're going to catch a sight of. So maybe as we start talking about this stressed achiever, can you kind of describe your life before? What was the before version of you kind of, what assumptions were you living under? Um, Are there any stories that you have? Mm, Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to share. Um, So, I mean, I'll start from, I think most of my life, I have been an achiever, like going all the way back to high school, captain of the dance team, grades, being really involved in school and And I think it's important to point to like, oh, wow, like this pattern or this identity of um, who I attach myself to has been there for a long time, which I think is important to reference to when we're wanting to change something. It's like, oh, it may take a little time to change this pattern that's been here my whole life. Um, And so I went to school in the Midwest, went to college and uh, for fashion And I always dreamed of either going to LA or New York. I was like, this is the plan. I've got got it all figured out. And so I graduated college a year early, moved to LA at 21 and um, got my dream job in the fashion industry. And again, I was like, I've made it. Like, this is it. This is, you know, my dream job. Thought I was going to probably end up with the guy I was dating from school. And, and um And that lasted for a long time, kind of being in this, it ended up kind of being in the tech startup world where I really tied a lot of um, who I was to my work and and working my way up the ladder, titles, making more money. and, um, and, And I enjoyed it for a long time. I'll say it worked until it didn't. (laughs) And, um, and along that journey of being in the startup world, I got involved into coaching. And so I had my own business on the side. And so I already started seeing some patterns while being in the startup world of like working a lot and um, feeling kind of this emptiness or like the bar continued to move. And I never seemed to get there. I was like, hmm, I keep making more money, keep getting the title or I keep whatever the external thing was that I was tying my, my happiness to. And so I was like, okay, I need to just work a little harder, whatever the story was. And then one of the things that I, I really came to a conclusion is, okay, so maybe the startup world isn't the thing. Once I work full time for myself, then I'm going to actually slow down and then it will be different. And so, again, tying a lot of my inner journey to the external. And so I um, had that vision of leaving at some point to work for myself. And I did that. And I was like, all right, now this is time where I'm not going to be so busy. I'm going to slow down. And pretty quickly, the same patterns were there. And, and this is when I very divinely connected with Jem pretty quickly on my entrepreneurship journey when I went full time. And I remember conversation after conversation with you where it was like, I thought this would be different. Like I thought I have all the time in the world. I have all the choice in the world. I have all the freedom in the world. I'm working for myself and I still feel this, um, tied to having to do and having to work all the time and just the same patterns of burnout and all of that was there. And so that was, that's a glimpse of, of what it was like. Um, I can speak more to that, but that's kind of a dropped in moment in time of, of, yeah, a lot of my, my journey. Yeah. It, I mean, what, what I'm hearing you say is really, it's an inside job because your externals mm-hmm. changed and yet that same pattern was inside of you, mm-hmm. but you, you don't know it until you make that shift. And then you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this pattern is in me. Mm-hmm. This pattern is in me. So I'm wondering, are there some thoughts 
Mm. that or voices we're using those synonymously inside the book and in this conversation thoughts or voices inside your head that that came up a lot in that stressed achiever mode yeah i think well one of the things um i think that is extremely important around becoming more aware of like when we're wanting to change it's like yeah. I, I've really found awareness is half the work. Yes. Truly. Cause it's like, once I was aware, um, I saw I had a choice. And when it was like underneath the surface, it was just like, no, this is just how it is. These beliefs are running the show period. That's it. Um, and so some of the stories that I was really tied to was um, my worth was tied to doing to achieving. That was a big one. It's like, I think the bring myself to my knees moment was like, who am I if I'm not achieving? That's a big one. Ooh, ouchie, right? Yeah. Who am I without this? Yeah. And that's a scary question. Cause it's like, but that's my identity. That's where I've tied. Uh, I, I was getting something out of achieving. Like I was getting a recognition and praise and like, there's a reason I kept doing it. Yeah. And so I think when, when the, the, that payoff wasn't, it was um, becoming more of a pain and, and seeing that these stories were, actually hurting me and creating a lot of suffering um, is when, when the change happened. And so, yeah, the worst being tied to doing um, making money is hard. I have to work really hard to make money. Uh, being an entrepreneur, one of the big ones, my business is only growing when I'm at my laptop, like <laughs> really physically, like it, um, yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of self-will. There was not a lot of trusting in anything greater than myself. Um, so yeah, some of those beliefs were, I, um, it felt like a death letting go of some of these things. Oh, for sure. I mean, when your identity is tied and this is the insidious part, right? It's, it's alluding to what you said. Before, I mean, at some point, when is enough? Like, when can I have enough money? When can I have enough fame? When can I have enough success? And the answer when you're in that mode is there's never enough. Mm -hmm. It's always, I'll have enough later. And but I know you though, that somewhere mm -hmm. deep down inside, there was a voice calling out like, what, there's more to life than this, mm -hmm. right? So you had these very loud voices that were patterns. Mm -hmm. And somewhere inside of you was another, like, just hello. <laughs> right. So, so yeah. Talk to me about how you then move from, from unconscious to conscious, because you're right. It is about being aware. We talk mm -hmm. about noticing, discerning and responding. The, mm -hmm. the NDR is our big thing here. Mm -hmm. When did you start noticing this and when did it become conscious enough to start discerning what you were seeing? Yeah. Um, well, one, one thing that has been a constant in the last decade of my life is um, having outside support. Yeah. So, because when it's like Morgan talking to Morgan in Morgan's head, it's really hard to see anything, any conscious anything. It's like, this is just the way. And so this is something that I'm committed to for the rest of my life is always having outside support, outside reflection, um, because that it's, it allows me to speak things out that I may have never said. They were just it, thoughts, which then the second it becomes conscious, I speak it out or I write it down again. Then I'm like, oh, is this something that I still want to hold on to? Is this a belief I still want to operate from? And, and that takes, like, that's really challenging to do on your own, Come like have all of that going on. And so I found having, you know, someone like you, Gemma, a spiritual director or a coach or a mentor or communities um, 
with other women doing inner work uh, or any sort of spiritual, you know, community is the foundation, was the foundation of change for me because I started having spaces where I could bring more consciousness to my thoughts and, um, and process and speak out the thoughts and the beliefs that were running the show. Yes. Oh, that's so, it's so wonderful. And I think you're so wise because you're right for a lot of us moving from unconscious to conscious. Sure. We can do it inside of ourselves. Sure. There's a level of that, that you have to get conscious enough to even know that you want to have support. Yes. Right. <laughs> Um, but the support is critical. I'm with you. I plan to have someone speaking, looking at alongside me with my, for the rest of my life, I will have a spiritual director or a therapist or, or a coach or somebody with me for the rest of my life, because I don't, I can't just trust <laughs> exactly. you can't, it's, you can't be your own doctor. You can't be your yeah. own therapist. Yeah. You can't. So even just having someone hold space long enough for you to say all the words and all they did was gloriously listen. That's gift enough. So even if you have a good solid friend who can hold space for you, but getting it outside of yourself, I love that you're sharing this because I think it's really important mm -hmm. to not try to do it all only inside your own brain, because then we're back at the sort of the joke. Um, was it um, oh, one of the big thinkers, Einstein, you know, the same, the same entity that created the problem cannot also solve. It. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I think yes. we have to face that. So I think that's really important. So I'm hoping we're we're all encouraged by the fact that you sought help. And so as as I mentioned before, you had that voice inside of you somewhere calling out for there's more than this, there's more than this. This isn't the way I want to live. And it came to consciousness. And now you're surrounding yourself with mm -hmm. other um, people who can can carry that. I'm wondering mm -hmm. um, over the course of time, then what did that process feel like? You have a transitionary moment, right? Mm -hmm. From letting the pattern run the show, but, mm -hmm. but you're not quite living exactly the way you envision. What does that middle spot feel like? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to also speak to that moment that, that I sought then outside support was yeah. kind of a, uh, often change comes from a, a bottom or uncomfort mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, it was, it was, I think, a, again, a bottom for me was then going and working full time for myself and still having the same patterns and feelings. And then that's when I'm like, wow, okay, the solution isn't just where I work or the work I do. There, there must be something I'm missing here. Yeah. So, so that I, I think that's important to speak to that it was an uncomfortable moment that often is when change happens or we seek help. Um, so that was it for me. And then the, the in-between of like the, like the, the change process, the evolution of change. I mean, it's really not a glamorous necessarily process. It's really just one day at a time, one day at a time showing up and, and, um, you know, doing my meditation, doing my prayer, having my calls with my support, having calls with you every month. Um, and change takes time. And that was something I was really, I'm a, an achiever. Like I'm going to achieve my way through this process too. Like, I'm like, okay, how can I, how can I get, you know, how can I uh, be the most efficient in, in getting through this? And so I really had to practice so a word that absolutely um, I, I repeat multiple times a day is gentle, 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 gentle. And as an achiever, um, oof, it brings up emotion right away. It's just this like immense amount of grace and um, compassion for because that that achiever is still in me, like she's still here. And I've seen that trying to like judge her or shame her or be like, oh, that's bad. Often then she comes back louder. <laughs> so I've really seen love has been the, the foundation of long lasting change, yes. like loving that part of me too. 
and just being like, I hear you, honey. Like I hear the little girl that's afraid um, to close the laptop and unplug from work. And, and it's like gentle, it's going to be okay. Oh, I love that too. I could feel that as soon as you put your hand on your heart, (laughs) if you're, if you're only listening, she put her hand on her heart and she said, gentle, gentle. Yes. I think that's so compelling because we don't do that for ourselves very often. It's Mm -hmm. so easy to move to some form of judgment or blaming or some version of something that's not helpful. And, um, And I think you're right. Uh, Love, Mm -hmm. grace, gentleness, compassion. It it would be wonderful if some of these dynamics would flow to the front of this conversation, especially, well, always, but especially when we're making the transition Mm -hmm. from one mode of behavior to another, we're trying to make our way. Mm -hmm. And I, and I do like to focus on the word trying Mm -hmm. I'm practicing, I'm trying, I'm in the process Mm -hmm. and that's okay. We had a lot of conversations about (laughs) process. (laughs) Yes, we did. Yes. And it's important. I still say it for myself. And I just, I was just on another interview. Uh, Someone was interviewing me and and I talked about process because it's, it's important in our culture. And now you're in another culture. I don't know. We haven't talked much about what it feels like there, but you know, you're from the States, that pressure, the constant pressure of productivity Mm -hmm. and grinding. When you were describing earlier, I just, the grind, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's just sort of in the air. Mm -hmm. So what would it be like Mm -hmm. if you could believe that it was okay Mm -hmm. to be a person, (laughs) Mm -hmm. right? And not a machine. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Jem, your your quote of I'm a whole human being, not a human doing, um, is like I I remember you sharing that with me and like, yeah, I'm not a machine. Um that that has always that's it's reminded me, I don't know, the sense of of a connection to God, a connection to yeah. spirit, because it's like, oh yeah, I'm like one with the earth and and um and I don't look at it. My cat just walked by and I, I don't look at my cat and, and think she should be a machine and, and doing every day, you know, like she actually is such a beautiful reminder of like, she takes naps and she, she like, she's being a lot. Her, her essence, a cat is a lot of just being not yeah. doing. And so why would I be any different? Like she's God's creature too. And so, yeah, bringing me back to my humanness has been, um, cause the perfectionist, all of that's tied up in there too. And so remembering I'm human and, and also another perspective that really changed things for me is one of my coaches is like, Morgan, life is just one big experiment. It's like, we're just running experiments over and over. Like we don't actually know a lot of things you've never done before. And that took some pressure off of needing to do it the right way or um, the perfectionist. And it's like, what if I just run this experiment of letting go of the doing? Maybe it's a month. I remember we would talk about one afternoon. That felt like a lot. It's like, Morgan, just like, what if you gave yourself the afternoon to just go sit at the beach? And I remember feeling it felt so scary to be like, what about my business? Like just everything came up in those moments. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if you can hearken back to that. I mean, did you find, obviously you did it and now it's more of a practice that comes easier, but I mean, in that transition, was there a way in which um, God showed you that it was okay? Like I I took an afternoon off and nothing fell apart, right? Is that accurate? Mm. I mean, did, and and did something good happen in you Mm. that helped maybe? So one of the biggest foundational things I've learned from you is the the power of reflection. And it's like, when we reflect, like that's where the wisdom lies. And so um, I may not have, have evidence that like taking an afternoon off, like everything was gonna be okay. 
But what I did was I reflected back to all the moments where I, um, it, it felt really scary to make a change or to like leaving my full-time job Oof. and seeing the evidence that it worked out. And so it was like looking back at the moments in my life that um, felt really scary, felt like a similar feeling to what I was feeling like going, taking an afternoon off. Again, it sounds so wild and being like, okay, if God showed up in those moments, I also was in a long-term relationship that I ended another big milestone moment that if I wouldn't have done that, I would not have the life I have today. And, and so reflecting on all that, I'm like, okay, so what if taking an afternoon, it could work out? What if I applied that same God supported me through all of these huge things, like really right sizing, like what if an afternoon, the world didn't end, my business didn't end up in flames, you know, it's so funny, the stories can be so loud, the fear can be so big. And so for me, that has been a game changer. It's, I did a similar thing with coming to Europe. It's like, we had never done this before. <laughs> this is a new terrain. And I, I really reflected with all these moments that I trusted God and took a big leap and where my life worked out. And it was beyond anything I could have imagined. Like, can I trust in this moment as well? Such a beautiful reminder to reflect, to look back, to be, what you're describing here is wisdom mm. and discernment. Wisdom mm. and discernment come from reflection. Mm. Right? That's how we learn. It's how we grow. We look back and we see how things work or didn't work. And then we make a decision now based mm. on that, right? Yeah. And so it's just evidence of your growing ability to discern what might be best. And again, sure. It's an experiment. Maybe, maybe this isn't going to work, but you know, you make a hypothesis, I guess, and then you try it out. Yeah. So, but you have found that, um, that filling yourself up benefits you, your marriage, mm -hmm. your friendships and, and yes, your work, mm -hmm. right. Do you, you, do you not have evidence that you being more whole in this way, um, benefits how you show up? in your work? I mean, absolutely. It is, um, it's what my business, I mean, in all the way, in all the areas of my life, and I'll speak specifically to my business because I see my achiever really show up in work. Um, one of the, the things in slowing down, which is, was, so that was already a, a big after, um, effect of letting go of the doing and achieving was slowing down. And it started with external slowing down. And then I realized, oh, inner slowing down is, is different. Like I can sit at the beach and my inner world can still be very quick. So when I really worked on, it started with external slowing down time in my calendar, my inner world started slowing down. And, and what that brought me is um, specifically in my business, like a deeper place of creation, creativity. Yeah. Like it's a whole, it's a different well when I'm creating from a slowed down connected place versus the achieving, doing um, kind of surface level, somewhat ego. Oh yeah. Like creating from a soul level. It's like the things um, the, the women I tracked in my coaching, there is a, a flow and a ease that I find. Um, and another thing is I'll be in prayer or meditation, slowing down and I'll think of a woman and I'll be like, I should reach out to her. And sure enough, I reach out to her and she's like, oh my gosh, I was thinking of you or wow, this is the most perfect time. I'm going through something really hard right now. And it's um, another big mantra in my business is spirit is my business partner. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that is a after effect of letting go of the doing is it's really spirit led because yes. um, I get out of the way. It's not so much Morgan's will, self-will. It's much more 
uh, God and spirit guiding my business. And that is an incredible feeling. Yes. Wonderful. I just love, I just love hearing your story because I've been able to watch now for what, four years? Has it been four? Four years. Just the transformation from those very early conversations where just these ideas were just like, what? (laughs) (laughs) And, but then your willingness, your total openness and willingness to step in and go on the journey. And then what joy to see the fruit that is being born, the steps that you've taken, the wisdom you've gained. And to hear you say, it is so true and and our listeners will recognize that too when you said when something's coming from sort of the surface level or something's coming from the soul level that's mm-hmm. a completely different experience um and obviously we wish it could be that way 100% of the time we know that there's that ebb and flow but when you can sense that you're giving something from that deep place it's so so satisfying um mm-hmm. and meaningful so there's so much good fruit here Morgan, just hearing, just even naming our stressed achiever and how loud she can get and like, oh, you're not nothing unless you've got me, you know, (laughs) and then you realize, yeah, thank you, sweetie. Well, hug, 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 come along for the ride. We're going to do it this way, which is what we do with all of the voices. We don't shame them. We don't push them away. We don't chastise. We say, thank you. Thank you for helping me to where we are now. Um, why don't you take a seat here over on the side of the table? I'm going to sit here and we're going to make loving, discerned, wise choices now without maybe as much stress. Mm-hmm. And this, again, sounds so easy to say like that, but it is it is a process, but you can choose the process. You can experiment. You can go on the ride and you can fail. We all fail. We all stumble. We make mistakes. It's okay. You get back up and you keep going. So that's, that's the joy of the journey is we don't really need to put as much pressure on ourselves as we think. Don't you think? Oh, that just makes me want to exhale hearing that. Woo. <laughs> it's so true. Well, I'm wondering maybe just in a, a couple sentences, what is it like then? Um, we've heard your journey. What's it like right now? Like, what does it feel like to just live where you live? Um, serve the way you're serving, you know, what, what is it like? Um, I'll say, I'll just share a framework that I, I really has been present with me lately is um, a lot of life is based on uh, the goal line, which I, I um, explain is like getting the job, uh, you know, getting the house, having the kids, whatever it is, the external. And my, in my attention and focus over the last years has been on the soul line, which is the inner journey that I, for a lot of my life, um, didn't have any awareness around that. Oh, wow. It can, it's different. And so my life right now looks like a lot of, um, a lot of freedom, a lot of peace, a lot of, um, joy, And none of it is necessarily tied to the external, which feels like um, a really empowering place to be. Yes, that is amazing. And at such a young age, (laughs) I know there's so much more life for you to experience. Can you imagine? I mean, how much growth has occurred in four years as you keep uh, growing and moving and morphing? along mm-hmm. how much more does God have for you? It's going to mm-hmm. be refined. It'll be like a fine wine, right? Because everything <laughs> builds, everything builds on itself. There's still more to learn and grow and more, um, more of life to come, but mm-hmm. you have a really good foundation here. And, and I think that's good. So I'm, I'm hoping again, um, all of you who are listening, wherever you are in the journey, whether you're Morgan's age or you're my age, we have a lot in common here. I've got a stressed achiever. She likes to come out and talk about stuff. I'm still in process. I'm still becoming a refined wine. This whole life that we're invited into um, is a glorious journey. Mm -hmm. And so um, let's do it, right? (laughs) Let's do it. Do it. (laughs) I think that that might be taken by Nike, but that's okay. (laughs) Um, I'm wondering, wondering, um, is there, 
as we as we part ways now, is there one thing that you would like to leave um, mm-hmm. with those who are listening? What's what's one thing you would like to encourage them with or inspire them? Um, what can what can you invite them to do? Mm. Um, the biggest thing is reach out and and get outside support. Like I am a product. What I just shared of what my life feels like right now is because I have a team of women around me that remind me that remind me, um, to focus inward because I do forget over and over again, I am human. And so the biggest thing I can say is just have women or support around you that will remind you, um, who you are, what you want in life, what's possible. Um, that is the foundation and, uh, the reason I have the life I have. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And you know, I have to leap off of what you just said and talk about replenish for a moment. That's my online coaching and community for women. And it's probably by far the cheapest way you can do what Morgan just said, because it is a fraction of the Mm -hmm. cost of a therapist or even a reputable life coach or spiritual director. (laughs) It's only $37 a month right now. Mm -hmm. And it is, we are, um, we are a group of women. There's already about 60 of us in there. And we have linked arms and we are journeying together and we're growing. We're continuing to grow. Women are signing up all the time. We want you in there. So what Morgan said is true. And I couldn't believe it more myself. Mm -hmm. We need each other. We need Mm -hmm. support to know that there are other women who long to grow as much as you Mm -hmm. and to find them. That's Mm -hmm. a miracle to just find each other. (laughs) Yes. That's who's that's who's coming into replenish right now. So that's my little plug in that I had to say that. But Morgan's right. Whatever you do, even if you don't don't join replenish, get someone to listen to you. Unpack your thoughts, your feelings, your dreams, and let yourself be seen and heard and known. I know that Morgan believes in this. She's a coach as well. So our passion is to empower women Mm -hmm. and to lift them up. So I know we share that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Morgan, such a delight as always to be with you. Is there, uh, maybe tell us, remind us again, how can we find you online or on social media? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram, just Morgan Northway. uh, And then I have a website, morgannorthway.com. Those are the main two places to find me. And uh, Yeah. yeah, I'd love to connect. That would be wonderful. And if you ever do anything in Vienna, I suppose if any of you want to take a trip to Vienna, Morgan could. Uh, yes, come. <laughs> I am calling everyone to Europe. Come visit. Let me know. I'm happy to show you around. <laughs> oh, goodness. Wonderful. Well, thank you again for being with us. Thank you, Jen. Here's your I can do that for this week. Take a moment to ponder. What is one of the most defeating thoughts the voice of the stressed achiever throws your way? Based on what you heard today from Morgan, how might you like to respond? Remember, you're making your way forward one small, simple, and gracious step at a time. Now, the voice of the stressed achiever is just one of the unhelpful voices I share in my book, Hold That Thought. You can get your copy today and learn how to notice, discern, and respond your way to greater wholeness. Purchase it wherever fine books are sold. Again, it's Hold That Thought.